Hi, everyone. It's your favorite drag witch, Nova Jupiter Jenkins. Or at least I'll be your favorite once you get to know me. My friends call me Nova JJ, and you can too. We're spellcasting live from... Oh, well, we'll get to that in a minute. First, I'd like to tell you a quick story of how I came to be. My boring alter ego, Adam, was an aspiring boy witch. But he found his magic hit a plateau. His hexes weren't very hexy. His potions lacked pizzazz and his spells tended to sputter. One night on a full moon, he prayed to the goddess Freya for guidance. She appeared to him in a dream that night and said, When day turns to night and the moon is most bright, shed the king of you and wear the queen. The nine realms will open and your magic be free. He jumped up immediately and with what he had around the house, did his best to drag himself up. (laughs) Oh, goddess, That was some of the sorriest drag you've ever seen. But she cast a spell with all her might and bam! She was transported here and I was born. And just to be clear, I am not just Adam sitting here in some cheap wig and makeup. The spell that transports us here also transforms Adam into me. These luscious purple locks and ample bosom are as real as the rest of me when I'm here. Where is here, you ask, impatiently? It has a lot of names. Some melodramatic individuals call it the ethereal realm. Some angsty types call it the night side. But I like to call it the heath. Christians started to call non-Christians heathens because they considered them to have come from the wild heath outside of good Christian civilization. And they said it like it was a bad thing. But I'll take the wilds over a supposedly good Christian civilization any day of the week and thrice on Sundays. Don't get me wrong, I love Adam's Christian friends and family. Hey, I just wish you could ditch the dominant Christian paradigm. And no, my sweeties, just because more people are challenging the hegemony and asserting their right to exist free from your arbitrary rules doesn't mean you're being persecuted. Not getting to hoard privilege does not a victim make. Luckily, I'm a little removed from all that since I only exist here in the heat. And no church is in sight. We do have libraries, though. Well, one, anyway. And with this library, one is all we need. It's called Kalamudutu. It's where I work. Sort of. Work is a loose term. More of a calling, really. I'm a book hunter. Sometimes that entails retrieving a book for a patron from within the library, which can be a bit dangerous. Describing this library as massive is like describing the ocean as a little salty. It's practically endless and kind of alive. And there are more things in the stacks, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Sometimes the job entails retrieving a book that a patron has checked out and either lost or neglected to return. And that means venturing out into the heath, which comes with its own unique challenges. I don't technically get paid, but I come across compensation in one form or another. I also do a regular stint at the information desk. Out of those who survive Peggy, the guardian of the entrance to the library... Most of them know the way around here. And the rest, well, (laughs) I'm sure they'll find their way here eventually. But that means it can be a little quiet, so I decided to start recording this podcast. I'll hopefully have guests from time to time, both from the Heath and from Earth, a monthly tarot card reading for Earth, and listener dream interpretation. I may also have some opinions on the philosophy of magic, and a tale or two for my time book hunting, as well as stories from the books themselves. Time works a bit differently here. Adam does the spell to come here every full moon, but when I'm here, it feels like a month goes by, even though he returns at sunrise. Since this is the first episode, I hope the spell I'm working to record this will have the intended result, which is a digital file that will appear on Adam's computer when he returns. (laughs) Oh, someone's hungry. You may hear the odd sound from the denizens of the library, but pay them no mind. So... Not only is it Pride Month, but this full moon falls on the exact anniversary of the beginning of the Stonewall Riots. Let us never forget the fabulous secret powers that were revealed to us the day our trans and drag pioneers of color and queer youth held aloft their pumps and bricks and bottles and said, we're not going to take it anymore. Eternal gratitude to those who marched and fought for the freedom to be fabulous and inspired future generations to do the same. Okay. Let's get to the tarot reading. Many of you will be familiar with the standard tarot card layout, the Celtic cross spread, but as you'll notice, I like to use more obscure card layouts. 
Because it's Pride Month, and this month's full moon is known as the Strawberry Moon by the Algonquin people, whose stolen land many people celebrate Pride on today, we're going to be using the rainbow fruit spread. First up is the red and wild strawberry position. The card in this position represents the seeds that you need to sow when summertime is here. Even though we'd rather spend the summer relaxing or parting it up nonstop, it's important to spend at least a little time preparing for the winter ahead. The card we have coming up in this position is the strength card. This one you don't need any psychic insight to understand. Tough times are upon us and things will get worse before they get better. This card in this position is advising to remember to recharge your batteries. Gather those things that give you strength. Whether it's good memories with your friends and family, talismans that remind you of who you are, or that 80s power ballad playlist. Have them at hand because you'll need them for the long haul. Next up is the orange position. The card in this position is the vitamin C that you need to fend off the scurvy that is afflicting the collective unconscious on these dark and stormy seas. In this lot, we have the Eight of Wands. This is the card of speed and communication. It calls for keeping the lines of communication open across long distances. In this case, it's not just distance and space, but in perspective. We all have people in our lives who we don't see eye to eye with, and as more and more issues have an increasingly polarizing effect on society, it's important to stay in touch with friends and family who may fall on the far side of a particular issue, not only to explain where you're coming from, but to hear them as well. And E.T. Double Broomsticks, while you're at it, reach out to the loved ones who are a long distance away. The third position is the lemon, the sour pill to swallow. If you're not careful and let it overpower you, this card can ruin the whole shebang. But in small doses can be just enough to provide a pleasant tartness. The card in this position is the Ace of Pentacles. Pentacles are associated with the earth and are often tied to money or material possessions, and this card in this position is no exception. We all know that capitalism is the worst. That being said, financial stability is important, but if we spend all of our time focusing on obtaining or maintaining wealth, we're going to miss out on the true fruits of our labor, the things that really matter in life. While those fruits may be different for everyone, whether it's a rewarding career, a crusade against the forces of evil, a loving family, or a combo platter, if you're working to make money just for the sake of making money, which is an imaginary and arbitrary way of keeping track of material success, well, you're missing the point. Okay, I bet you thought that next up would be lime for green, but the next space in the spread is held by avocado, the good fat. This is the thing that you thought you should fear, but not only tastes good, but is good for you. Just beware the pit. And the card in this position is the Two of Cups. This card has to do with friendship and union. It counsels to get out there and get together with your tribe. As part of the other, queer people have often had to create their own families, having been rejected or having felt isolated from the families they were born into. As more and more rights have been won, the dividing line between privileged and other has shifted, and we need to strive to keep our communities connected to make sure that no one is left behind. We can define our tribe in a lot of different ways, but as always, united we stand. The forces of evil always seek to divide and conquer, so find that way to connect. The pit in this avocado is the tendency to let misunderstanding or lack of true communication keep us from really bonding with our chosen family, in that way that we can feel alone in a crowd. We need to get in there and connect on more than just the surface. Next up is blueberries! These are the fruits of our labor that can sometimes be a little too fruitful and a little more than we know what to do with. This position represents the overflowing gifts in our lives that we need to pass on to our neighbors. The card in this position is the Hanged Man. While often representing sacrifice, in this spread, this card more refers to the fruits of sacrifice. The wisdom, enlightenment, and patience that we gain from sacrificing time, energy, innocence, or other aspects of ourselves. We can harvest these experiences in abundance and offer them to those around us to be included in their recipes for pies, jams, and cordials, i.e. a better, sweeter world. And lastly, you guessed it, grapes. The heart-healthy bunches of light and dark perfection that we can enjoy off the vine or stomp and ferment into spirits of celebration. 
This card in this position represents the outcome of or the harvest of our previous endeavors. And here we have the Page of Wands. And by page, I mean a knight's personal assistant, not a page in a book. Wands represent fire and passion, and the page in tarot represents youth. This is the next generation of passionate and fiery millennial activists who aren't taking it lying down. They're going to set the world on fire, but in a good way. Work! So we need to do what we can to support these kids and make sure they have the knowledge and tools to keep fighting the good fight. There you have it. I hope you found this little fruit salad tasty and insightful. Next, it's story time. We're going to start with a story from a random book that I just reached out and grabbed from the return pile here. Let's see. Wait, what? No, Gerald, I'm in the middle of something right now. I'm recording a podcast. Sorry, everyone. One of our regular patrons has approached the information desk, but doesn't need any actual information. No, I'm sorry, Gerald. You can't be on the podcast. Because you're a ghost and the spell I'm using to record can't pick up the sound you're not making. Because you don't have vocal cords. I don't know, I'm not a ghost physicist. Maybe, but there aren't that many spells that are designed to record audio across realities. I'll see what I can do for next time. Well, I was about to read a story before you interrupted me. There's nothing wrong with this book. Viscera and You, a Necromance. Okay, that's maybe not the best topic, at least for the first episode, but I'll let you pick the next one. For now, why don't you go to the ghostly section and read something on your own? I know, I'm surprised it isn't bigger also, but then we don't come across ghostly books in the wilds very often. I'll try and keep more of an eye out. Just go float in the corner for now. Yes, I'll tell everyone that you said happy pride. Sorry about that, folks. Gerald, who had a much cooler name when he was alive, was a patron who came into the library some time ago and insisted on going to find a book himself, instead of letting a talented and experienced female presenting individual do her job. And of course he got himself killed. How were you killed again, Gerald? I know that I already know. I'm asking for dramatic effect, and because you're never going to live, I mean die it down. Fine. Gerald was killed by a fairykin. That's right. A fairykin. Not even an actual fairy. And what was your name before you died? They can't hear you. Corgon the Mighty, wasn't it? And what book were you looking for? The Adventures of Puffin the Magical Puffin? Okay, okay, you're right. There's no shame in wanting to find a beloved childhood story. Or in being bested by a half-fairy child. Except for the fact that you got into it with her because you were being belligerent. There is a little shame in lying to yourself. And a lot of shame in being sexist, though, so I'm still going to give you a hard time for the rest of eternity. <laughs> you love it. And if you don't, there's a suggestion box 538 levels down to the right, past the Geological Sciences Basilisk, and through the section on Eternal Darkness Civilizations. Just drop a little note in there, and we'll look at it during the next staff meeting, which occurs when the planets align every 500 years. Well, I guess maybe I'll save story time for next month. Let's get to some listener mail. I know what you're thinking. How can she have listener mail if this is only the first episode? Well, I happen to have received an email from one of my clairaudient listeners. For those who haven't heard that term, you know how some people who can see the future are called clairvoyant? Well, people who can hear the future are called clairaudient. Shout out to my clairaudience. Okay, so our precognitive listener writes, Since you change genders when you transform and are transported... Wouldn't you be considered a trans witch? Signed, Claire Audient in Seattle. Well, sis, that's a good question. I guess, academically speaking, an argument could be made that I fall somewhere on the spectrum of trans identity. But I identify as a drag witch for a couple of reasons. The main reason is that since I don't exist in the mundane realm, I don't share the lived experiences and struggles of our trans brothers and sisters. I can't pretend to know what they've gone through while shining their unique and precious lights into the darkness. Hopefully in the future we can have a trans witch or two from the mundane realm on the show to share their experiences. The second reason is that even though the relationship between Adam and I is unique, it's a little more akin to the relationship between a gay man and his drag persona than an individual whose gender identity doesn't necessarily match the body they were born with. 
And kind of what happens when a drag persona gets a mind of her own. And on that note, that's going to be it for this ripe and juicy strawberry moon. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I look forward to bewitching your ears next month. Adam is going to look after everything for me on the other side, so send me an email at novajj at novajj.net with your dreams for me to interpret, your favorite spells, or just to say hi. You can visit novajj.net for show notes and other fun stuff. Rate, comment, and subscribe on Stitcher, iTunes, or wherever you listen. Unless, of course, you're listening to this through the haunting tones of a cursed theremin, then maybe just wail into the void. And remember, sometimes the grass isn't just greener on the other side. Sometimes it's redder, oranger, yellower, greener, bluer, and purpler. Bye.